Hi friends, it's Marie with Living Belt and today we are going to card art bats. In this video, we're gonna go over the basics of carding an art bat. We'll be working on our fancy kitty model Little Tom, which is motorized and just a dream to card on, but the same principles will apply if you're working on a manual carder as well. And of course, we'll be working with our 19.5 micron merino top and some delicious fibers. I will show all of those to you. And together, we are going to make these dreamy little bats. This is our fancy kitty motorized little tom. We have some basic tools, including our cleaning tools. We have fine 19.5 micron merino tops. And then we have some lovely luster fibers to choose from as well. We're working with commercially processed tops. So before we get started, it is really helpful to separate those fibers a bit. I do this by placing one hand down on the end of a length of fiber and just pulling or drafting it out to loosen those fibers. We'll also spread the width across so that they just go from being really compressed to being well opened up. Because we are working on a motorized unit, before plugging it in, make sure that the switch is in the off position and the speed is all the way down. Turn the unit on, make sure it's in the forward position, and then increase the speed using the rotary knob. This right here should be just touching the teeth. You don't need it like drilled all the way down in. I have all my fibers laid out in the order I would like to build them onto the bat, and how we build a bat is completely up to you. We can load items into the feed tray or paint on the drum, and I always tend to do both. One way to start building the bat is to place the colors on the feed tray one at a time. This gives you a really clear idea of how things are going on to the drum and you can see bare spots and overlaps very easily. You'll notice that we're starting our art bat by loading the drum with wool first. We really wanna build a nice solid foundation of wool fiber onto the drum this is going to help us get more fiber off the drum when we go to take it off. If you start putting your luster fibers and your bling fibers on first, rest assured that more of them will get stuck in the large drum teeth. It's really important when we're loading fiber onto the drum carter to keep the fiber within the teeth bed. So don't load it all the way to the edges of the tray. Another way to load the feed tray is to lay all your colors out on the feed tray before starting the unit. That way you see where everything is positioned. It's completely up to you. From time to time, as you're feeding fibers into the tray, you may notice that the liquor in or the small drum, which feeds the larger drum, grabs onto your fibers more quickly than you anticipated. They might go sideways and they might get a little squirreled up. Don't worry about it. You'll use your burnishing brush to just compact everything down onto the larger drum. There might be a tendency to want to hold back the fibers or abate them onto the feed tray. If you do that, you'll probably notice that the liquor in will grab onto the fibers and they'll wrap around it. Try to avoid doing that. It's okay to guide them, but don't worry too much if they get on the liquor in because its job is to feed fiber onto the main drum and it will pick them up. So train yourself away from that habit. It's better to put less fiber on at a time and to make sure it's spread out and well spaced. When you're painting fiber directly onto the drum, it's really helpful to stay a little closer to you than the highest peak of the drum. This prevents the drum carter from grabbing onto your fibers and taking a bigger clump than you want it to. I love painting fibers right onto the drum. Just note that you want the fibers not so long that they're dragging onto the teeth, but this is a great time to just add stripes and make subtle blends. 
From time to time, use your burnishing brush to pack all of the fibers down. The teeth can actually hold a good bit of fiber. We're going to make bats that are just over two ounces, but we could make them probably double that weight if we wanted to. Your burnishing brush is your friend. It's going to help you keep everything laying down. As you're feeding fibers in through the tray or even onto the big drum, just be mindful of your fingers. Now is not the time to wear dangly jewelry. So take off your scarves and your big loose sleeved sweaters because you don't want them to get caught up in the teeth. After we've built a really solid base of our wool fiber, that's when we start adding our luster fibers or an embellishment layer. If you're wet felting, you may only want this on the very top, but if you want lots of options, then you can do it in layers. So we did a solid layer of wool fiber, then we're adding our embellishment fibers. We'll go back and repeat with the wool fibers on top in another layer and add more embellishment fibers on top again. The Angelina can kind of sit on top of an art bat as well. So I like to put it on and then add other things over it. The Sari Silk Waste adds delicious texture and can also help trap down those Angelina fibers and make them lay down a bit as well. Nips are like confetti and look, they're a gamble going in. So sprinkle a little bit on, try not to let too many get out of the way because they'll just clump onto the drum and just know that some are gonna fall off. They'll probably fall off when you go to spin this into a yarn or felt them anyway, but they are fun to add. From time to time, I will use my burnishing brush to clear the liquor in, and then I'll just drop the fibers back on the feed tray or paint them right on the top. Be mindful as you're loading the drum, whether you're using the feed tray or you're painting on top, that the fibers are not pilling. If the fibers start to pill on the drum, it's because you have them too many packed on the teeth or they're not packed down enough. So the burnishing brush will help you evaluate that. Slowing down your drum carter and evaluating whether the fibers are even will be really helpful for you. You know what I just love about these motorized drum carters is that I can be hands-free and just paint on the top of the drum while I'm creating these art bats. To me, it is just so free and the, there's just plenty of space for creativity to come out and explore. If you want your bat to look really blended, then continually alternate between two colors side by side. Or when you put it on the feed tray, just stretch it across its color place and the color next to it. Alternately, you can hold two fibers in one hand and sort of turn them back and forth and back and forth so a little bit of each gets grabbed by the drum and makes a really nice blend right on the drum. While we're working, the packer brush that is built into your unit will help keep those fibers compressed, but it doesn't always do the job all by itself. That's why we use the burnishing brush.
When you're happy with your bat, it is time to remove it from the drum. If you're using the motorized unit, in order to be able to move the drum in the direction you need, you can switch it to reverse or you can unplug the unit. Disconnecting the power will disconnect it from the brake motor on the drum. The doffer is this pointy stick that we have and this little plate is our guide. You only want to use your doffer stick on this metal plate so that you don't ruin the carding cloth on your drum carter. Take as much time as you need to completely clear all fibers that are running along that plate. Continue going in multiple passes until you've cleared them all, but you don't have to try and rip through all the layers at one time. Use the burnishing brush or another brush to coax the fibers off of the teeth and bring them down to this wooden edge or the wooden box of the drum carter. If you pull the bat against this edge, it provides a great tension that really helps release the bat from the drum. Take your time here. Getting all the fibers off is really what you want to do. And I use the little pick that comes with the drum carter to do that. If fibers are left behind, they're gonna hang on to more fibers on the bat. It's like an annoying roll of tape. <laughs> so take your time here. There really is no rush and release all the fibers so that when you take your bat off of the drum, your drum is left really clean. This little art bat would be perfect if you're a felt maker, just as your topical surface design so that you don't have all this delicious luster fiber buried in the middle. We made two different bats using the same colors. On one, we spent more time keeping the colors separated and did very gradual blends between shifts in color. And on the next bat, we alternated and overlapped colors a lot more so that it looked more blended, more light, more flowing. That's all for this time, y'all. We hope you had fun. And if you carved some art bats, we hope you'll share them with us so we can see what you're up to. Leave a comment down below and let us know what blends you would like to see us card up next. For more carding videos, check out this right here or visit our carding playlist.